Now that's some fabulous sunset and a fabulous backdrop to be moth trapping. I'm back at Ecrin at the side of Iron Wood for the first time since 2014. going to seem so strange. Well, for those who don't know a deal about moth trapping, this is a 125 watt mercury vapour bulb. Mercury vapour light being extremely attractive to moths. Unfortunately we're in the back end of September so to get 30 species tonight I'll be pleased with. I don't know whether the temperature might drop a bit, a bit too much. There's no silence as there is in the garden because we're having to power the light by a generator. But the big advantage of trapping in the wild, so to speak, you get more moths, you get more species. And with land wood being on top of a hill here, there's always the chance of attracting migrant moths. Not ideal conditions for migrants, so I'm not really expecting anything. Just see what we get. I'll be a bit identification rusty for some species I won't have seen for seven or eight years. It'll be fun relearning, but funny without Dillis. I never thought I'd trap out away from home again. But here we are. So let's see what comes in. Oh, sorry about the noise, but it's a bit more picturesque than a back garden in Warsaw. And hopefully, the neighbours are friendly here. It'll seem strange drinking tea out of a flask. No matter how good a flask you have, tea's always crap, isn't it? from any flask. But we await the first moth. And we'll see how it goes. It's the first time the generator's been run since 2014 and may even started. I'm amazed it even turned over when I first tried to start it. Well, something appeared briefly then. There's some nice colourful moths this time of year. 
once you get to autumn. So hopefully, we'll see a few of them. And see what comes in. Well, it feels strange to be back out trapping. But it feels alright. Not the ideal conditions. Pretty much a clear sky. And uh, there is a an approaching full moon that will be rising in the east now. I'm on the western side of Lamewood, so it's sheltered from any moonlight that there is. And certainly will be sheltered for another couple of hours. There's not that many moths around. And I'm not seeing lots at the moment, but often for the first sort of hour after dusk, we used to, where I'm trapping now, we used to stand here and you sort of light the trap, set the trap going. And you, there would be hundreds of large yellow wanderings and they'd come in from all over the place and they'd land in the tops of the trees where presumably they would feed on honeydew. And that was their first port of call and then a bit later in the evening after a couple of hours of darkness so they'd start and drop in. But there's been a pink barred sallow in and a brindled green which is nice. And... Uh, on the micro front, Epimenia so species, I uh, don't remember what it is now, but Epimenia anyway. So uh, it's steady. But the main plan and the main idea of coming out here tonight is certainly to give the generator a good test. And uh, there's a few things, I've forgotten the, te the thermometer. We always had a thermometer with us, uh, so that what's removing from the inside of the shed door. And I want a new plug on the light cable. So, uh, and I need to fix my net, or well, this net in particular. I could bring the good net out from home, I suppose, and start using that. But this one's handy because this one lives in the car. But it needs a bit of mending. It seems better days. So we'll see what drops in. And if you can see that, that's the International Space Station going over. Quite high. Remember many years ago, we came out here, Dillis and myself, and we brought Dillis's mum. And she was nearly 90 at the time. And we brought her to see that because at the time, as that was going over, a few minutes later, the space station followed, was following behind it. It was quite something to see, the space station, and then, as I say, it was a few minutes behind. And it was followed on the same path by the space shuttle, or one of the shuttles. While we were waiting for it, actually up here, and it was dusk at the time, and we got clouting views of a barn owl. So it made an old lady very happy. How oh, about that then? An absolutely stunning female as well, Merville de Jour. Moths of such fabulous names, you know. And this is a widespread moth in Nottinghamshire, not one I've trapped at home. It's often likely, but it's an oak feeding species, and yet for some reason it just doesn't occur anymore in Sherwood Forest, which is full of oak. That's a crane fly disturbing proceedings. A most magnificent moth. Thank you, Crane of Light. It was sat there lovely. And now it's warming up. That's, there has to be something special to top that 
This is the only place we've ever recorded it, funnily enough, Merville du Jour. Several records. It's a late flying species, say September, late September, October, next to it. It's more common fare in the form of Cetaceous Hebrew character. And what else have we got? Typical species that you'd expect lunar underwing, which are well marked, but they're not a patch on that lad. Well, I'm going to give it two hours because the temperature has dropped. I say it's not brilliant conditions, clear skies, there's a bright moon up. I can't see it yet, but I know it's on its way around. And with the temperature dropping because of those clear skies, not much is flying. And it's been funny being accompanied by this sound. Not heard this sound for seven years. And it's been nice to come back. The first of many more visits to Loud Wood. It's not a bad place to trap. We want better conditions next time. Well, there we are. A couple of hours gone, just the same, the conditions. You are better with a cloudy night and without that bright thing in the sky. However, listen to that. The moon does make a nice companion in a sky like this. I like the peace and quiet. Despite liking the loudest music possible, and from that ranging down to the quietest music possible, I love the sound of silence. For once, no cars, no planes, no helicopters, no tractors in fields. No mountain bikers having a conversation 30 yards apart at the top of the voices. And as a car approaches up the hill, we wait until the silence is restored. It is a magical time, night time. As I've always said, I think the best hour is about two o'clock in the morning on a June night with a clear sky and warm temperatures. Especially if you're out and about somewhere like this and you pack up and you're ready to go home. Yeah, something incredibly peaceful. It warms the soul. So time to go. I need my ready break in the morning. <laughs>